In today's episode, we're in Northwest Pennsylvania to explore the long abandoned Warren Generating Station. This power plant was commissioned in 1948 by the Pennsylvania Electric Company and served for half a century until it was shut down in 2002. For nearly 20 years, it sat undisturbed, slowly decaying at the hands of time until recently when it was finally demolished. However, we managed to make it inside right before the salvage crew came through and obliterated this piece of industrial history. Join us as we venture inside and discover what's left. A portion of today's video is sponsored by Audible. Get access to a huge selection and a free audiobook at audible.com slash proper people. We arrived at the power plant to discover demolition was already beginning. The smokestack and precipitators were on their way out. Fortunately, it seemed no work had yet been done on the interior of the plant, and the crew had gone home for the weekend. Go pretty deep. I guess the coal will come into the plant from somewhere over here. It's pretty unique to see one of these coal delivery things underground. Usually they're on conveyor belts that go to the top of the plant. I hope this actually gets us in. Look at all these signs. It's super flooded down there. Elevator. Elevator looking That's on. pretty cool. Here's a map of. Uh, is that the entire plant? Yes, it is. Yeah. See, All the way from turbines, turbines to smokestack. So we're at ground level after going down all those stairs still. What's that? We're at ground level after going down all those stairs. Oh yeah, I know. But then we went up the ramp. Yeah. Look at all these jackets over here. Look what there is in here. We got some nice Christmas decorations. How festive. The rule is never broken. There is always Christmas decorations. Look, they got a uh, control room breaker on that. What? Same kind of control room breaker. You know the turn and pull ones? Oh, right in the middle. Piece of wood. 
a lot of welding masks. Check this out over here. They have a wall of fame. I have files on everybody here this thick. The wall of fame. These are all people who retired. And probably some people who signed it when the plant shut down. After 23 years, no more. Right there, helped pull the plug, 2004. So that must be when it went completely offline. Old power plants come, old power plants go. There's not enough wall to say it all, so bye and good luck to you all. It was great while it lasted. It is winter and the sun is going to be setting pretty early, so we do have to move a bit faster than we would like to here. Uh, I see a turbine. Got some valves. Wow. It's a pretty compact power plant, but it's a small plant for a small town. Look at this decay, dude. That's the ceiling. Wow. The ceiling is collapsing everywhere. Also, it sounds like there's power on outside. It does. There is a substation next to this place, so. Wow. Why are these, like, medical looking stuff? It's because that's what it is. It's first aid stuff from like an infirmary on site. But why is it in the middle of the turbine hall? I don't know. It was probably moved here by an explorer or when they were gutting it. No, not gutting explorer it. Explorer when they were not put this here. I don't know. Probably when they were emptying stuff out. There's gas masks here too. These are really vintage looking turbines. There's not a lot of ones this old left around. Check it out, it's really flooded down here. Wow, look at the safety sign over there. Warren Station safety depends on you. Days since our last lost time accident. 75 ton crane up there. Let's check out these turbines. They're blue. Bluer than usual. Yeah, it's not green for once. Not it's green. Blue. But there is some of that industrial green on the tiling over here. has to be included somewhere. Inside Warren's turbine hall were two Westinghouse turbo generators, each with a capacity of 42 megawatts. The large arched pipes that would have carried steam from one part of the turbine to another give the machines quite an imposing presence. Complementing the all-important machinery are the gleaming tiled walls and streamlined modern handrails. This type of attention to detail was already falling out of fashion in many mid-century power plants, but the designers of Warren Station were holdouts. Electricity was a modern marvel, and they refused to treat this source of it as a utilitarian appliance. 
Even in this state of decay, the plant has a sense of dignity that shines through. down here it makes it look really deep <laughs> yeah because of the reflection even stuff as simple as this tiling I appreciate because modern power plants we've been in it's just all bare sheet metal and it's pretty sheds. ugly yeah and now they're not even building the sheds well it depends on the climate that the power plant is located in but they realize that certain power plants it's a waste of money to even build a turbine hall just put the turbines outside this is one of those places that truly feels like a time capsule it may have shut down in 2003 but it has not been updated over the years of its operation at least nothing major has been changed, as far as I know. Look at all this moss growing over here. Yeah. The buzzing is the substation outside. This sign is just amazing. Hand painted. I hope that gets saved when they demolish this place. The ambience in here is next level. Number two generator. Probably would have said Westinghouse right there. Oh, I can't even read it. That's annoying. You can see RPM maybe. I believe that says 3600 RPM. This room looks like it should be a control room. Definitely could be. Authorized personnel only. Oh yeah, this is the control room. This is the main control room, I think. Pretty nice. Wow. Warren Station's control room is actually one of its most noteworthy features, thanks to its high degree of centralization. The plant's four boilers, two turbines, and almost all auxiliaries could be monitored and commanded by just two people in this room. In fact, the entire plant could be run by a shift as small as six personnel. See, so this control panel is for the boiler. These are all for boilers. 2002. 2002 here also. 2002. Let's These see all the years. Haven't updated their system since the 90s. 
Look at these keyboards, yeah. too. They're, they uh, could not even type. Not full these. computers. They're yeah. just if computer they had control to type boards. In, they had to use these little buttons here. Yeah, it's a computer control yeah. board. It's not like a full, you know, normal use computer. You can see the burn-in. It's a, uh, it does have some kind of interface, but obviously no pointer. You had to tab around and just enter. Yeah. And here's where it would read out how much power for each unit. And then the combined output of both of those. This place is untouched. Well, wow. there's missing some stuff, but I know. But I mean, 925, I'm talking vandalism. 926. This one went a whole nother day than three. They're all 2002? Yep, all around September, also. Oh. You can see when they retired each unit. The employees that did it all signed their initials. That's pretty cool. It must be so strange to be in here working for like 20 years. Yeah, and then coming, imagine coming back here. And then the, worker who worked here in the last day of work, it's just quiet when you leave. Most that, of the workers who worked strange. here probably have no idea what it looks like now. Oh yeah. I doubt they imagine it this decayed. They probably imagine it in their head, like exactly how it was when they left. Probably. That's the last time they probably saw it. Yeah. We got some vocab. lots of instructions for how to do things. So I guess to run a PowerPoint, you don't really have to know everything, but you have to know how to look up that information and find it quickly when you need it. These are hand drawn. Wow. Here's what the inside of the control panels look like. I think those brown colored pipes probably lead to pressure gauges. Maybe they lead to the flow meters up there. No electronics involved here. Just purely old school. See, in a more modern application, the reading would be taken by a sensor at the machinery. Whereas here, it has to be routed analog somehow to the control room and then converted to a readout right here. Rather than just being a digital signal coming in from wherever. Okay, let's check out the boiler house a bit. I don't think we need to see every inch of it because we don't have a lot of time. Look at this little control panel. Is there, there's one in front of each boiler. Yeah. Look at this just extra detail. It just looks too plain and simple if they don't put these little layers in it. It's kind of art deco. Streamlined, modern, I think. Is yeah. the That's a exact art classification. Art
You in here, Brian? Yeah. Oh, you're right there. Asbestos and arsenic supplies. Yeah. Oh, why are, oh, not asbestos. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Man, this is a really cool room up here. Really high ceiling with those glass block windows at the top. Look at this right here. What is this? Portable something. Yes, it is. These are pretty cool to look at. They're very 80s sci fi feeling. close to the powdery stuff right here. Pits for the coal. Yep. Pretty standard looking. Yeah. Nothing that special. Oh, lab. Here we go. It's a little bit stinky in here. It's a small one, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to go in. It smells kind of bad. Yeah, there's nothing really left out. It's mostly empty. Yeah, this is one of the smallest power plant labs I've seen, actually. There is a lab. There's a lab, though. How humid it is. It's so wet in here. It's just fogged up. This would have been a cool view out to the hall. Yeah. Nice handrails on the staircase. What are these? Cancer prevention basics. Oh, nice. Wow, that's cooler than I thought. Some marble stalls. Nicer than most restrooms, I'd say. Got some cool looking decay in here too. Oh, and there's a locker room back here, too. Yeah, 
NRA. Someone's glasses. Fitted for a bit of safety on the sides. We probably haven't made a bottle like that in 20 years. So if you were a worker here starting your shift, you would have just been coming from the locker room over there. And then you'd be heading down here, seeing this view of the turbine hall. Oh wow, these signs down here are really cool. A careless person is just an accident going someplace to happen. And then this leads straight to the turbine over here. What a time capsule this place is. For real. I want to see the actual blue one that's under here. Oh, this is the boiler. It says, welcome to Warren Station. Please sign logbook when entering and leaving. Do you think there's any explorer's names in here? No, 06 is the last one. I think people are probably too scared to sign yeah. here. Might get found out. Wow. The last sign was 06. This is the kind of place that I could spend two full days in. Going through all the files. It's not a big place, too, but it's one of those where you could spend hours in a small spot. Yeah. But unfortunately, it's already getting dark, and we need to do our slider shots before we lose light. So that's going to be the end of this exploration. After our visit to Warren Station, we felt inspired enough to return. By that point, however, demolition had greatly progressed. The turbines had begun to be dismantled and most of the decay cleaned up, giving the sense that time had simultaneously moved forward and backward in our absence. The one benefit of this cleanup was that we could now access the previously flooded basement level, and in the dark depths we found this incredible drawing done by a worker. Faintly visible below the high water mark was the name Wormwood. It's unknown when exactly the portrait was drawn, but long after the last workers had signed out, Wormwood was here. And as the rubble of Warren Station is backfilled into the basement, there Wormwood will stay, buried in the ruins of his previous domain. Thanks to Audible for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Audible's extensive library of audiobooks is perfect to fill your time when you have a long drive ahead of you or you just need something to keep you busy while getting some work done. With an Audible membership, you get one credit every month to redeem for any title in their entire collection, which are yours to keep forever, even if you decide to end your membership. Additionally, you get access to the Plus Catalog, which is filled with thousands of audiobooks, original content, and podcasts, with unlimited access, no credits needed. Included in their Plus Catalog is the audiobook, Why Architecture Matters. It's a great listen for anyone interested in architecture, 
The audiobook goes in-depth of how culture shapes architecture and how architecture's components affect us emotionally. The title explains how buildings are more than just shelter and how buildings can be seen as iconic by way of design and situation. Give yourself the gift of listening during this holiday season. Right now, for a limited time, save 60% on your first three months of Audible. That's only $5.95 a month. For more, go to audible.com properpeople or text properpeople to 500-500.